GitHub's worst feature is also the one that people stress out the most over. But is this thing really all that important even? We're talking about those little green boxes on GitHub today, and the video starts right now. What's up developers, it's Real Tough Candy from realtoughcandy.com back in the great outdoors with you guys today. We're talking about a question I got from one of my patrons, Jim. He had a few questions, but this was the one that I first read. How important are those little green dots on your GitHub page? And what I'm talking about with those green dots, your contributions to GitHub as recorded by GitHub. Now contributions, um, in the fine print, GitHub defines a contribution. It could be a pull request, it could be um, pushing code, it could, be edit it could be editing some code. There are many definitions of what GitHub considers a contribution. And every time you make a contribution and GitHub records it, you get rewarded with a little green shaded box on your GitHub profile. Now, this is the same thing as Instagram likes, uh, Facebook comments. It's really in the grand scheme of things quite meaningless because a contribution says nothing about your talents. It doesn't say anything about you as a developer other than the fact that you were dabbling on GitHub. Those green boxes say nothing about the projects you're working on, say nothing about the type of stack you're interested in. Um, you can find some of that stuff out if you dig into the projects, but as far as the green boxes and the contribution box itself, all it shows visitors is how often you've engaged with GitHub. Now, from a mid-level and senior perspective, absolutely worthless. Even worthless from a junior perspective with the exception of employers because unfortunately this little box does tell employers how active you are with code to some extent i know it's a really dumb litmus test unfortunately github's worst feature is just stamped right on the front of your profile page and it offers a quick snapshot to employers of how busy you've been with code what I'm saying is, um, even though that box is pretty meaningless, it becomes less meaningless when you're faced with your competition when it comes to finding a job. Say, let's say you have a clone. Your clone looks like you, talks like you, has the same resume as you. The only thing different between you and your clone is that your clone has a blank GitHub contributions box and yours looks like a cornucopia of contributions. You got dark greens, you got light greens, you got in-between greens. Oh, look at those shadings. Aren't they beautiful? That is going to be that marginal thing that puts you ahead of the pack, that puts you ahead of your clone. And it's going to make you stand out in front. So what I'm saying is, if you have these boxes shaded and someone else doesn't, that's gonna put you marginally ahead of the other candidates. And I wanna emphasize marginally, because even though this is an indicator to some people of how busy you are, I'm using air quotes, of how busy you are with code, it doesn't measure anything about your ability. It just shows people how active you've been on GitHub. A lot of mid-level and senior developers who are employed don't use GitHub all that often. Even juniors who are employed don't use it all that often. Um, because either, number one, they're doing things at work that they cannot share, which is usually the case. Number two, they don't have time for personal projects, which is often the case. And number three, they may be using some other platform to host their code. Something like GitLab, um, Mercurial, I can hardly ever say that. Um, but there's different forms of version control than just Git, and there's certainly different platforms than GitHub. GitHub's the most popular site. It's very socially oriented, I guess you could say, um, but by no means is that the only one. That's the most popular one, and that's what we think of when we think of version control and you know pushing this, this code for other people to see. Some other developers just don't wanna share their projects with the world, and that's okay. Not, not all code has to be open source. And I think people get so tripped up on these dumb, trivial things like a contributions box, which in the grand scheme of things is absolutely meaningless, guys, okay? Anyone who is using that as a prime indicator of your viability as a candidate, I wouldn't want to work for them. I wouldn't want to work with them uh, because their ideas of a skilled programmer are very skewed at that point. The only thing, and I know I've said this four times already, but you have to understand this, the contributions box is just letting people see a quick glance at your activity on GitHub. 
I've seen talented developers with no GitHub profile. I don't think less of them. I've seen developers with five contributions over the past year. I've seen developers with a thousand contributions over the past year. And the only thing I'm really thinking is, wow, that person's busy on GitHub. Not, wow, that person must be really talented. Or, wow, that person must be a genius. I don't think that at all. The only thing I'm really seeing is that they're active on GitHub. But as a newbie, this box is important because it's going to put you ahead of other candidates and as superficial as it is, it shows people that you're active with the code, that you're engaging with the code. Now, once you're in the industry, you're going to be engaging with code. Uh, it may or may not involve GitHub. Is anybody really judging Uncle Bob, Sandy Meds, Douglas Crockford, and all these other luminaries based on their GitHub contributions, based on their GitHub box? No. They've proven themselves in other ways. They've proven to people that they know how to code. So if you got to the point in this video where you're thinking, okay, I don't have very many contributions and I don't know what to do, well, there are some hacks, and this is just another reason why this box is just so dang dumb. You can, a contribution could even be cleaning up, cleaning up spaces in your code, adding a line of a comment. As a junior developer looking for a job, that's what I did a lot of times. Some days I didn't feel like coding, some days I didn't have anything to push, some days I just didn't want to share my projects. So I would go into some of these projects that I had pushed, I would just add a comment, I would just clean up the code, I would just close up some spaces, formatting stuff, you know, prettify, prettify some stuff, just make it a little prettier and <laughs> call it a day. Um, that way you can get four and five contributions, get that, get that shading of that green real nice just doing some basic trivial stuff. And in GitHub's eyes, whether you're tweaking the latest and greatest framework you've just developed or adding a line to a comment, it's the same thing. It carries the same weight. Um, so try not to try not to get too stressed out about this stuff. There are many ways you can make contributions. Um, even correcting little spelling and grammar things so easy to do and it takes 30 seconds. <laughs> if you really want to hack the system, just type jibber jabber, delete it, and then save it or push it. That's one easy way to do it. The GitHub box is sadly important when it comes to junior developers looking for a job. Employers are looking at it. People are judging you. It sucks. Fortunately, once you get a job, it becomes much less important. Uh, you're showing your employer that you're coding and doing things when you're at work. You know, I'm looking over my own contributions over the past year. I have like 140, 150 some. Sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I better do more to keep up with the Joneses. I better have at least 200. Like, seriously, who cares? I'm busy with code every day and I'm doing work with code every day. I don't need to prove to strangers that I'm a coder. Uh, I know I am. And I, I work for myself. And unless I'm trying to impress myself, I really don't need to be wasting time trying to hack the system and uh, pushing things that really don't need to be pushed. Some quick channel announcements. Number one, Real Tough Software, my newest book, is dropping January 26. It's already a number one new release on Amazon and it hasn't even been published yet. It's not even out yet. Thank you guys so much for your support. Pre-order link in the pinned comments. Announcement number two, it's 2020 and it's time to code. It's time to learn this stuff. It's time to level up. So I don't know when exactly, probably in maybe two weeks after publishing this video. I'm thinking, don't quote me, but I wanna dedicate 10 to 15 videos, consecutive videos, to you know, span over two or three weeks, just talking about education. We're gonna be talking about college options, we're gonna be talking about boot camps, we're gonna be talking about self-taught pros and cons. I'm gonna be talking more about this and what you can expect. We're gonna be doing live streams. <laughs> that last live stream, guys, it was so awesome. It was a four hour, 35, was it 35 portfolios? 30 some portfolio review. Ooh, that was awesome. We're gonna be doing more live streams during that education blitz. Um, taking your guys' comments, engaging with you guys with the live streams. Really enjoy the live streams, but I don't think the four hour ones are feasible. I just gotta, I gotta train for them. That's what you gotta do. You can't just jump into a four hour fest. So we'll start with the hour or two live streams and then work our way up, but really looking forward to it. So if you haven't yet, subscribe to this channel because there's gonna be a lot more videos coming your way that you find useful, that you find maybe a smidge entertaining. So thank you for watching. Jim, I hope you enjoyed this video, especially thank you for your patronage. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.